Hi, uh, my name is Michael Shannon, and I'm going to talk about complex terrain rendering. But first, let's see a little demo. So this is a project. Mostly what I'm going to be talking about is the actual terrain itself, not the trees or the grass on it. Um, but let's just run, let this little short demo run through real quick before we continue. So I'm actually going to start talking now. Um, to generate the terrain, there's 15 textures. Um, the first 12 of such are for the four different types of materials, sandstone, grass, and forest, and then cobblestone you see there. And then the last, and there's uh, diffuse, specular, and normal maps for each of those. And there's those textures. And then the next three is the blend control, which determines which material to render where, the displacement height, which allows us to get terrain height, and then the normal, which is used for lighting with those displacement. So this is the geometry. It's actually sent to the GPU. It's uh, tiles of 64 feet by 64 feet. To get uh, more detail, use tessellation. So the tessellation control shader, we have to determine the level of tessellation and to do that, we compute the distance from each midpoint of the edge to the camera. And the closer the edge is, the higher the tessellation level. So here's an example of a tessellated triangle. Um, so like edge one here has tessellation level three. And edge two has tessellation level one, which basically means no tessellation. And you can see the new vertices that OpenGL is generating for us. In the tessellation uh, evaluation shader, we have to figure out all the properties for these new vertices. And that's easy because OpenGL uses barycentric coordinates, which means we can just take the values at each of the original uh, corners and then multiply them by the x, y, and z, which in this case is actually barycentric coordinates, to generate that value at point P. And we do this for the texture coordinates, the position, the normals, and the inverse CBN matrix, which we'll get to in a minute. So as the camera gets closer to the train, it generates more triangles. All this is GPU side. This allows us to get a lot of uh, degree of fidelity close to the camera without wasting polygon count. But it's uninteresting because there's no depth yet. For that, we use a normal map, which is a grayscale texture. So it goes between 0 and 1, and then we remap that between a minimum and maximum height, and then displace vertices along the normals. We also displace the new vertices that is generated in the tessellation shader, and we get more detailed terrain close to the camera. But there's no lighting yet. That's because we don't have any normals. So to deal with normals, we use finite differencing to generate a normal map, which we'll then use to look up the normals for lighting. However, normal map is going to be related to the surface. So we need a coordinate frame in the surface. And for that, we use the uh, BTN frame, or the bitangent tangent normal frame. So the normal is the normal, the traditional normal. Tangent is tangent to the surface along the positive x. Bitangent is going to be tangent to the surface along the positive y. And those are the positive x and y texture coordinates. And then to do lighting in that frame, we have to convert the camera and light vectors into the BTN coordinate frame for each vertex. And then, of course, that's going to be interpolated uh, across the surface for each fragment. And then we just look up the normals, and we get lighting. And we use those for lighting calculations. But we don't have any textures yet. So now we use the blend control texture. So we have a sandstone, forest, grass, and cobblestone. And this tells us where, on a per fragment basis, sort of, to draw those. And to do that, we use four-way texture blending. So we use RGB for, the, uh, for three of the weights. And for the fourth weight, we just take one, subtract the other weights. And then we can use the, multiply those by the texture properties like the diffuse, the specular, the shininess, and the normal for each material to determine the blended material at a given fragment. And we get this. 
It's looking better. However, we still have no depth to our textures. You can see the texture is flat. The, the, those cobblestones look flat. And that's because uh, we're using just the original normal map from the displacement texture. So we use detail normals. The detail normals are basically the blended normals of our materials. And we end up with something like this. This is the normal map for cobblestone. And we can't do what we did before. We did linear blending before. And linear blending doesn't work well when our weights are equal. And in this case, the weights are 50-50, and so linear blending is not going to work. So we re use a reorientation blend, which is based on quaternions. And this is going to take the, the base normal, which we, got from the which we computed from the displacement map, and then reorient the detail normal according to that normal. So instead of just adding them and averaging them, we're actually going to reorientate the normals. And this means we don't lose detail. So now we have actual details. You can see it appears that the texture has depth. This is actually a lighting trick. This is because the normals on the far side of the cobblestones is pointing towards the sun there, and the normals on our side of the cobblestone is pointing towards us, and so they don't get, shit, and so they don't get lit. So as I said, there are 15 textures and very simple geometry sent to the GPU to generate this. So as you might imagine, there's a lot of shader code in here. Uh, 500 lines just for the terrain. And so sometimes things go wrong. And so that's kind of my takeaway from all this, is that when writing shader code, make the smallest possible change and then retest. Otherwise, you'll have this, and you won't have a clue what you did to cause it. Questions? Uh, is that a skybox or that, that looks? That is a sky sphere. In fact, that is an HDR sky sphere. Okay. Explain what that is. Uh, so it's 16-bit. Uh, uh, so it's 16-bit for R, G, and B. Um, if you just use the regular 8-bit, you actually get a graduated. The, the blue won't be smooth because there's none of colors. Yep. How did you generate the textures? For? And if, for anything, where did you get them from? Did you? Uh, texture Haven is pretty okay. much where I got everything except for the grass and the leaves. Okay. Yep. Yeah, like the, <clears throat> the detail map for like the cobblestone was from there too? Yeah, that's part of the texture. That's part, okay. Out of that, what type of file is that? Is that just a? That's map? just RGB. Okay. So uh, the R, I forget which one is the Z. It's X, Y, Z. So R is X, uh, G is Y, and then Z is uh, blue. With 255 colors? Yeah. Okay. yeah, there's no need to use higher resolution for this. The only things that are of, um, their 16-bit are the height map, because if you don't use the 16-bit height map, you'll actually get kind of a Minecraft look. And then um, the, the sky. What kind of frame rate do you get with running it? Um, over 100 on, at, on what, four, at 1440p. On what kind of uh, equipment? A 1080 Ti. It's what you're paying for. Yeah. For instance, all the trees and grass and stuff, or did you, like, did you instance it on the GPU, or did you just basically build it and send it each? So um, there are three types of trees in that scene. Uh, so there are three render calls in total. Um, so, well, actually six, because the, the trunk and the leaves are separate materials. And so what I do is I send a sequence of the, the, the model matrix and the normal matrix to the GPU and then use instance rendering. Okay. 